Robert Smith and the Cure have managed to do the impossible, keep an alternative aura while selling millions of records. Today, I'm here to tell you how they did it, and to give you a list of five Cure songs to celebrate their career, a list leaving out Boys Don't Cry, Just Like Heaven, Friday I'm In Love. Is that even legal? Barely. Hello to Potters and Newcomers, this is Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in music who's been living so long with these songs that he almost believes that they're real. They're bad shit. Time to look back and share our memories with the curious songs we like best. I'm ready with my list. Are you ready with yours? So Mint Car is Wild Mood Swing's pop highlight. Rich with flamboyant guitar licks and a fun to play bass line that stands out from other typical Cure bass lines that are more rhythm and energy driven. This one has a melody. It's got electrolytes. No surprise, the song is one of bassist Simon Gallup's contributions to the album. Mint Car is solid cure pop, the type that doesn't give a damn because it's time to get up and go. kick out the gloom, kick out the blue. <laughs> oh, brother. But one could argue Mint Car is also an experiment, lyrically at least. The picture painted here is simply too perfect. It lacks credibility. Could it be that Smith was throwing together a cynical take on what pop singles are like? After all, Wild Mood Swings is full of experiments, and boy, did people hate it for that. It was miles away from what fans expected, and unlike the Let's Go To Bed experiment, it was miles away from what was in the charts at the time too. I have mixed feelings about Wild Mood Swings myself, but my problem with the album has nothing to do with the music. It was the soundtrack of what, at the time, was the hardest year of my life. The Cure shrugged off the criticism and soldiered on. I... I don't know what I did, but at least Mint Car made the going a bit lighter. The Kiss, one of the most epic uses of a wah pedal, but the song also displays a less is more approach. Anyone but Smith plays really simple stuff which underlines and elevates the guitar work, guiding the listener through the depths of despairs that start the music and through the heavenly heights reached by its end. A great trip with many of the contradictions that may kiss me, kiss me, kiss me, such a remarkable album. The Kiss is a song of strong, dark passions, but not a love song. This Kiss is neither romantic nor nice. Actually, I'm not even sure any love is involved. It's like things have come to the mechanical act of kissing that they were never meant to. Was this a commentary of The Cure's newfound fame? The protagonist of the song is kissing someone while registering all sorts of ugly feelings. Maybe the band was enjoying the limelight while still registering the nasty side of celebrity. Armed with this theory, I once gave the album to a female friend of mine. I thought it was a lively album to introduce her to a band she didn't know. I was sure that the kiss proved that this was not a present from a would-be lover. This was no love song, right? Well, that day I learned two things. One, when people say men and women can't be friends, they're not crazy. Two, normal people think about the real meaning of music and songs much less than I do. Sorry, Juicy, I was really just a friend and that was really just a present. Well, The Cure accepted their new fame, soldier on, and moved forward. And I eventually shrugged off all the drama and moved on too. Ah, dressing up. I don't think I can articulate how much I love this song. Just appreciate it is so low in this list, 
because the other two songs are out of this world and personally significant. Dressing up is gentle. It wraps around you like a cocoon. It's like you are in your loving mother's womb. It comes to rescue when it's a bad day. It shows you sunshine when it's raining outside. It reminds me of warm slumbers on a glorious spring afternoon. But it also slows you down when you're too excited for your own good. The worst setting is brilliant with phrases dreamingly slipping into one another. The vocals, they sound unnatural, as if they were slowed down a tiny, tiny bit. The only bad thing about this song might be its abrupt end, but it's unexpected and makes you want to listen to it again, which is always a good thing. Dressing up is a tender, quiet moment in the storm that is the top. A remarkable record in itself. When it was easiest for Smith to just let the cure go and become a banshee for good, he soldiered on and hammered out a record that pulled him out of what looked like a bad drug habit as he pulled out the cure from quasi-retirement. Are you still with me? If you are, please share this video with your friends or tell me what you think about it with a comment. In exchange, I promise more and better free videos for you to enjoy. Time to be selfish then. But if you're feeling generous, you might want to send me a small donation via PayPal, as if you were buying me a coffee or a pint down the pub, if you like. Thank you. Now, let's talk about the quintessential Cure song, 100 years. Let's start with the obvious, with the immediately recognizable guitar riff. Its claustrophobic narrowness, the powerful, muscular, dense character of the music and its powerlessness and despair. It is less obvious, perhaps, that the basic beat of the song is poppy and danceable. Oh, sure, the real drums are too dark to be happy, but if you didn't know this was 100 years, it could be run the run. That's why I think 100 years is the cure distilled. Even at their darkest, the cure have always had a pop element to them, just like they've always had a certain unsettling character in all but a couple of their poppiest songs. And that's how they managed to sell without selling out. The Cure have always thrived on the conflict between high ideals and commercialism, between being so sad that all you want is to sleep and feeling just like heaven. Once the band stopped being perceived as some kind of morose cult, its music went up the charts, and when they fell out of fashion, they kept going in their own direction like they've always done, which sets a good example, I think. Okay, I admit I sort of cheated for the top spot. Technically, these are two songs, but tape served only as the time-suspended introduction for the opener of each wish to a gig, often melting into open, that is, as a single unit. Some people say that the best cure ever was the band that recorded this integration. I disagree. This is the one. And not just because I'm a guitar guy, and I'd rather have a Perry Bamonte than a Roger O'Donnell, or because this band could touch all sorts of mood with an intensity unmatched by most other acts at the time. No. What really seals it for me is that this was probably the only time when The Cure were a solid part of mainstream rock culture. They had finally become an institution, one of the few my generation could look at with more pride and respect than cynicism. When I watch the opening credits of show, I see my people, slightly older brothers and sisters doing their thing, dancing, 
kissing, showing off, or just being there, having a smoke. These people could have listened just as easily to R.E.M., Nirvana, Alice in Chain, or to I Will Always Love You if they were feeling cheeky. Perhaps I'm right in the cliché if I say that it didn't last long, that it was soon all but wiped out. What is sure is that I still have to find a better way to deal with life than the ones Myth and company have shown me for so many years. You shrug off what you can't change and you keep going doing your best, even when, like The Cure in 1993, you don't have anything more to prove. Well, my dear top patters, this video is too long already for me to launch into a philosophical discussion. I realize I haven't said much about tape or open. Give them a listen if you don't know them already. If nothing else, they're a peculiar f this, I wanted to stay home way to start a gig. Make sure you drop me your Cure Top 5 list in the comments section. It will be a useful addition to whoever is trying to find ways to discover this band and its music that doesn't rely on the official greatest hits. This was your Simon Mas. Stick around for more music related tales. For the moment, stay cool and keep a top hat on. Bye!